But what about negating quantifiers? Well, we already saw negating propositions that involved ands and ors, and they were referred to as De Morgan's laws. And actually, De Morgan's laws extend to negating quantifiers as well. So these are also referred to as De Morgan's law. And so we have De Morgan's law as the following. So what are these saying right here? If I want to negate a universal quantifier, all I have to do is switch it to an existential quantifier and then put the not on my propositional function right here. So I flip my quantifier and then I put the not in front of my propositional function. And similarly, if I want to negate an existential quantifier, all I have to do is flip my existential to a universal and then distribute that not onto my propositional function right here. So negating quantifiers, you simply flip and then distribute your not over here. So let's go ahead and get some practice when, uh, of actually doing this with a, with a real example. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit of practice here because I wanna negate this statement, but the statement is given to me in English here. So the very first thing that I'm gonna to have to do is translate this English statement here into some logical expression that involves propositional functions as well as quantifiers. So first off, I see for all over here, which makes me think that I'm gonna be using a universal quantifier. And then real numbers, that's defined my domain for me. And then I see a couple of statements, an x cubed greater than zero, that has a variable in it, so that's probably gonna be one of my propositional functions. I see a whenever, which is a keyword for implication, and then I have an x greater than zero. So that motivates me to define the following. So if I define my propositional functions to be p of x is x cubed greater than zero and q of x is x greater than zero, then if I were to translate this thing, the translation would then become the following. For all real numbers x over here, and I have this whenever, and I remember that that means the implication goes in the other way. So this right here is the hypothesis, and that is the conclusion. My hypothesis was Q. Q of X implies P of X. Fantastic. So what they want me to do in this problem right here is negate this statement. So if I want to negate this statement, what I have to do is then negate for all x q of x implies p of x. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and apply De Morgan's law. So if I'm negating this thing right here, I have a universal quantifier. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to flip that to an existential quantifier. And then I'm gonna distribute this not into that entire expression right here. Fantastic. Well, I can actually simplify this thing a little bit further, can't I? So let's go ahead and do that because I know the definition of implication right here. So I could rewrite this as the following using my definition of implication right here. 
And I see that I can apply another De Morgan's law, the De Morgan's law for the disjunctive or the or right here. So this thing is logically equivalent to, remember I flipped my operator. Like that. Simplifying it even further. I get this. There exists an X such that Q of X and not P of X. So if we wanted to retranslate this back into English, I could take this and translating it back. This thing says there exists a real number such that both Q of X and not P of X. Well, P of X was X cubed greater than zero, so not P of X is going to be X cubed is less than or equal to zero. So I've successfully negated this statement right here and translated it back to English. Therefore, the negation of this English sentence is that English sentence right here. And you can see that it took first off a translation using my quantifiers, and then I applied De Morgan's law for my quantifiers, and then De Morgan's law for my disjunctive, and I was able to translate that back. I suggest that you practice a whole lot for these because oftentimes the expressions that are going to show up in here inside of your expressions could be very complicated. So you need to practice, practice, practice to be able to make sure that you are properly simplifying your logical expressions right here. And that'll become extremely important when we get to proofs.